All right, I'm Matt Jones, and I'm making an immersive RPG using Godot. And one of the first problems I ran into when making the open world part of the game was how do you load scenes without blocking the main thread or stuttering when the, the scenes are large. So I figured out how to do that. You can just use threads to load parts of it in the background and then load the individual components using uh, in uh, chunks. Well, let me show you an example of how to do that. Okay, so for example, here we have a scene, very simple scene. It's just a bunch of cubes. We got four of them for the four static bodies for the terrain. And then we got a couple more static bodies for buildings. We got a barn and some houses. So what we want to do is load this into the world, but not block the main thread. Uh, let me show a diagram, or let me explain to you why that, why loading in Godot works the way it, it is. Okay, so for instance, whenever you're loading anything in Godot, it's a three-step process. The first step is you, re, you uh, load the scene file. The second step is you instance the scene. And the, th the third step is you add the instance to another scene. And the problem is all three of these, they block. And they'll block the main thread if you're running them on the main thread. So what I am going, to, what I decided to do is to run these two, the uh, load and the instance step, in a thread, and then to break up adding the instance uh, in the chunks. Let me show you a diagram of how that works. All right, so here's a very crude diagram. So basically we have the main thread down here, then we have a scene loader thread and a scene adder thread. Now the main thread, we don't want to block that, or we want to block it as little as possible because whenever you're blocking it's going to stutter the game. But these two other threads, that's fine for them to, to work as hard as they want and block as much as they need to because they're in the background. So for instance, um, the main thread wants to load that load this scene back here that we saw. So it sends a message to the scene loader saying to load the scene. So this will load the entire scene in it in the side of the thread. And then it will create an instance of the scene. And then after it's done that, it will send it over here to the other th scene adder thread which will then examine everything and it'll say oh these are the ba these are the uh, terrain cuz they're marked as terrain group and then these are buildings cuz they're marked as a building group and it will take each chunk and send them to the main thread so it'll, then they'll go like this it'll send one chunk to the main thread it'll send the next chunk to the main thread the next the next terrain chunk and the next terrain chunk and now it's got all the terrain and now it's going to send the buildings and send the barn and then the, the two houses. And now the, the scene is loaded in the main thread without without uh, blocking it or blocking it as, as little as, as possible. Um, let me show you see um, how it works in practice. Let's how it works when running. All right, so here we got an example. Uh, we got two ways to load a scene. We have it the normal way which will block and I'm going to I'm going to run that and it'll measure the time and show you how long it blocks for. All right, so we just loaded this simple scene. It seemed basically instant, but if you look down here in the console, uh, loading the scene file took 10 milliseconds and loading the uh, or creating an instance took 12 milliseconds. So both those combined it it blocked for longer than a frame was, so it created a stutter. So, um, and as you can see in the scene, we have uh, terrain. Let me make it bigger. We've got terrain. We've got some buildings. We've got some furniture. We got we got some tables with some items, some cans of soup, and some plants, and some NPCs. So each of these is is uh, in a group. So it'll know what group to load first. Because if you got this NPC running around, you want to load the terrain and the furniture and the buildings and everything before that. Otherwise, the NPC is going to fall inside the, the terrain when it loads. You need to know what what order to load it in. All right, now, let me load the same scene uh, using the threads and by chunk. Let's do it asynchronously. You can see it, 
you can see I, I have it slowed down so you can see it load each chunk and down here in the console it will display how long it took for each chunk so rather than blocking for I think it was like 20 something milliseconds and doing all that it breaks it all up and does it in a thread so you can see it's since we're breaking it all up and there's such small parts it's basically zero milliseconds one millisecond zero one zero zero so that makes it so the game runs smoothly so we can do this while the characters are running around and loading stuff in and let me show you the documentation for how to actually use this um, if you go to github.com slash immersive RPG I have some some examples and they're all MIT all of these examples are MIT licensed so they're the same license as Godot so feel free to use this in your project or, or make any changes and there's a lot of improvements I can make um, so for instance if you want to just switch to a scene you can just you can just add um, add the uh, three uh, um, what are they called singletons to your uh, let me see here. Your auto load, so you got scene loader, scene adder, scene switcher, and then you can use them in your project. So then if you want to just switch to a, a scene, you can use scene switcher, change scene, and then anything anything marked in the group terrain, building, furniture, plant, item, NPC, etc. will will be loaded in the correct order. If not, it'll just load it first. And then if you're inside a scene and you want to have more control over how to load stuff like here's how to load something asynchronously you can just do scene loader load sync or load scene async and it'll load it and then when it's finished it will just stick it inside of the the target here at the at the position or if you want to use a callback here's a, the same thing but it has a callback function so once it finishes the instance will be passed to this uh, on animal loaded and then you can do whatever you want with it um, anyway, uh, go check out the code. It's MIT licensed. Uh, there are f some improvements we can make. Um, we can make it load faster maybe, or, or maybe instead of having these hard-coded groups, it would be nice if we could have our own groups so you can just customize the ones you want and change the order. But anyway, um, uh, go check it out. Leave some comments. Uh, there's a link to the uh, the Twitter page you can and the YouTube page. Leave some comments, find some bugs, help fix some stuff. Thanks a lot, guys.